The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today I am on board Riviera's Belize 54 Daybridge. I'm going to put it through a full test and features inspection. We'll start by taking a look at some of the entertainment capabilities. We board the 54 Belize from the swim platform that comes out 3 feet 6 inches from the transom. At the transom we have the first of our entertainment venues. Underneath the hatch, an electric grill, sink with hot and cold running water, all standard. Now here's something we don't typically see in a boat in this size range, a tender garage. To launch, you simply put stainless steel rails onto the split platform and then lower the center section. Next, we have another entertainment venue up in the flying bridge. L-shaped seating wraps around a pedestal table that, yes, is expandable. Over to the starboard side, an entertainment center. At the top, there's a chill box forward, wood cutting surface, sink with hot and cold running water, a clever trash receptacle, two drink holders, stainless steel rail going around, storage underneath, and a refrigerated drawer. Over at the helm, we have the digital throttle controls mounted at an angle with the Volvo Penta joystick right beside. Which, when we're in the standing position, will give us a clear sight line right down through the companionway to the swim platform. The cockpit is boarded from either the left or right hand side from the swim platform. Now to the back, we've got bench seating, three across, a high-low pedestal table. Over to the starboard side, we have stairs leading up to the flybridge and underneath, refrigeration, to the port hand side, to a little serving area, and on this side, ice maker. The main battery switches are in a panel to the port side of the cockpit. But of course, the switching for all the individual components is done by the C-Zone touchpad. This allows one touch for powering up the boat and turning on all the lights, and one touch for shutting it down at the end of the day, making for a very simplistic operation indeed. As we move to the interior, we've got a galley opposite an L-shaped settee that wraps around a table that really constitutes an island. The galley is nicely equipped with a double basin stainless steel sink, three burner cooktop, three refrigerated drawers, and a dishwasher drawer. The boat comes completely ready to go, and here it includes all of the tableware with convenient storage and dedicated spots. And of course, we can easily combine the interior and exterior by opening up this glass partition, and now we have a seamless transition between the galley and the cockpit entertainment venues. Taking a look at the helm, we've got soft tones, which seems to be a theme with Riviera. We have no reflection into the glass. Ultra leather, ultra leather, and then a faux carbon fiber. We've got two 19-inch Garmin displays, all touchscreen. To the right-hand side, the digital throttle and shift. Now, the joystick for the IPS is located on the helm seat. That's because this one includes joystick steering. If joystick steering wasn't selected as an option, then the joystick would be mounted forward so that you could be standing at this position and have a clear view of the stern. To the starboard side, we've got three across seating plus an aft facing seat, so there's plenty of company joining the captain at the helm. And yes, the captain's got to step out so that the people can get into these seats, but it's a small price to pay for having so much company while the captain's operating the boat. Now let's take a look at the lower accommodations, this time through a curved companionway, which allows plenty of natural light into that lower deck. At the bottom of the stairs, we have a day head immediately to port. This has a private entrance to the forward stateroom. To starboard, there's a stateroom with over-under berths, and then all the way aft is the full beam master stateroom. Now this forward stateroom, the VIP stateroom, has an overhead height of 6 feet 10 inches. The berth measures 6 feet 10 inches by 5 feet. Take a look over here. We have a vanity with a swing out stool. Now let's take a look at the guest stateroom to starboard. 6 feet 11 inches of headroom overhead skylight, two berths over under, both lined with ultra leather, plenty of storage below and in front. Now the master stateroom, full beam, and of course it has varying geometry overhead. To the port hand side there's a small set T with a vanity just adjacent, hull side window with an opening port light. We have the master head and this, like the other head, includes a full walk-in shower, Cory encounters in a vessel sink, long hull side window again with an opening port light. 
So that's our look at the basic layout, but what continues to impress me with the Riviera line is its fit and finish. Let's take a look at some of the examples here. The table is all cut from a single piece of wood, so there are no interruptions to the grain, but we do have contrast edging all the way around, and notice how we've got tongue and groove to secure that to the table. Notice perfectly straight lines to the joinery work. No need to use caulking anywhere to fix any mistakes because there just aren't any. Contrasting materials in all the solid core doors. So let's get around the water and see how she performs. The first thing we notice is that the Belize line carries with it a more traditional look of the old down easters. But as we've seen from looking at her features, she still has modern touches throughout. She's got a length overall of 54 feet 1 inch, a beam of 16 feet 6 inches, and a draft of 3 feet 6 inches. With an empty weight of 51,257 pounds, 40% fuel, and two people on board, we estimated our test weight at 54,523 pounds. With the IPS 950s doing the heavy work, we reached a top speed of 33 knots while burning 76 gallons per hour. That translates into a range of 247.8 nautical miles. Best economy seemed to come in at 1750 RPM in 19.5 knots. That brought the fuel burn down to 30 gallons per hour and the range up to just over 370 nautical miles while still holding back a 10% reserve. As for her handling, she is every bit the lady. The grace and elegance that we saw in her features translate directly into her handling characteristics underway. She takes waves with a docile feel and we couldn't get any pounding regardless of how we hit the seas. Something along this class is all about entertaining and keeping her guests comfortable, and in that, the 54 delivers. Her blue water heritage also shines through in the way that we couldn't seem to come up with any adverse effects to her handling characteristics. With that said, she's also more comfortable gliding along at cruise rather than pushing her for best speed. She can handle it, but why bother? Relax and enjoy the ride. It's about the trip rather than the destination. Of course, as with any pod-driven boat, she makes short work of any docking situation. With joystick functionality, anyone considering a transition from a smaller boat should have no qualms about whether they can handle her around the dock. Overall, this is one very classy boat that not only looks good, she takes good care of her guests, both from a comfort standpoint as well as her amenities, regardless of whether they're spending the night aboard or just the day. So that's my full test and features inspection of the Belize 54 Day Bridge from Riviera. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.